Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to Dale Chanel's 40th World, where we do Bible reading, dialoguing, studying the Bible, and the different chapters of the Bible, written in scripture form, of course. We're going to be going over Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible. We're starting at the very beginning of creation and time and space, as you would say. Let's get right on into it. Um, chapter 1, verses 1 through, um, let's see, I think it's 30, no, 31. So chapters 1, verse 1 through 31. That's what we're going to cover today. Okay. <clears throat> the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw light. And he separated the light from the darkness. God called, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, and this was the first day. Okay? Then we have God back at work. God, and God said, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning. This was the second day. Okay? And God said again, this was the third day. Let the water under the sky be gathered to, the, to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God, God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas, and God thought it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds, and it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seeds according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years, and let them be and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, and the lesser night, excuse me, the lesser night to gather to um, gather the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. Well, let me go back, I'm sorry. Verse 16, God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning. The fourth day. And God said, let the water team with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and in every living and moving thing with which the water teems, according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning. The fifth day. 
And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock creatures that move along the ground and wide, wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that moved along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and all and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. <clears throat> Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over... women. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over everything living and every living creature that moves on the earth or the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, and that was the sixth day. Okay? I think I'm going to move on to chapter 2, and then we're going to call it a night. So you're going to have verses 1 through, well, well, you're going to have verses, well, chapters 1 and 2 tonight. And then we're going to move on tomorrow night with 3 and 4 more than likely. Okay, we're going on to chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God has finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because of it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. We're going into Adam and Eve, the first mother and father. The first man and woman, creation of God. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord God made the earth and the heaven, and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God has not sent rain on the earth, and there was no man to work the ground, but streams came up from the earth, and, the, and watered the whole surface of the ground. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye, and good for food in the middle of the garden were the, were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flow, a watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is Sison. It winds, it winds through the entire land of Havali, where there is gold. The gold of the land is good. Aromatic, resin, and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is the Gishon. Its winds, or it winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden. To work it and take care of it. 
and the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable suitable for him. Now, as you can see, when God first formed the earth, all the creation of the animals, the water, the um, the land, the vegetation, all of this, that, and the third, he made man. Man was in his direct image, meaning man was supposed to be the stronghold. He was supposed to be the um, foundation of the relationship. He was getting ready to put Adam and his helpmate, meaning Eve, to join together as the first marriage. This is what we've known it as from the beginning of time as human beings, okay? So again, Adam was made first, meaning the head of everything. Uh, and Eve, secondly, born from his rib into a human being, such as a female a woman. She was given her title. Uh, from the God, from our God, and um, she was only supposed to be the helpmate, the nurturer. Now, where we as a generation and a family unit has destroyed ourselves, we don't, we no longer have that man and woman in that uh, ready-made relationship that God had deemed good in His eyes. Uh, the procreation was going to come from Eve, meaning. By them having sex, by being, them being the first mother and father of the earth, parents of the earth, it was their duty to replenish the earth, fill it with beings, human beings. Uh, if it were not so, God would not have put woman here for this uh, type of um, service she was supposed to perform, for us being the mother of creation human creation in other words so i just had to put that in there we're going to move on uh, for our own edification here <sighs> where do we leave off okay the lord god said it's not good for man to be alone i will make a helper suitable for him that's where he came into play now the now the lord god had formed all out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air he brought them to man to see what he would name them and whatever the man called each living creature that was its name so the man gave names to all the livestock the birds of the air and all the beasts of the field see man where it whether it's black man asian man white man caucasian man you know, asian man eskimo man he still man, made man as the head of all beasts of the field, uh, all walks of life, the tigers, the bears, the uh, birds, the snakes, uh, the mammals, the, you know, the dolphins, all of that. Man made their names come to life of who they were as far as being labeled. And then um, there was no fear. Man had control over all creatures of the earth. Okay. That was a very powerful thing the Lord had bestowed on man. So again, man is supposed to be the provider. He's supposed to make all the important decisions. And when you're falling in line with what the Lord wants you to do, then you can't help but be a good man for woman okay but then sin came into play and that's when we all had our downfall all right but we're gonna uh sw swiftly move on to what the lord had ordained for adam so adam was given the privilege to name all the animals the birds the reptiles the mammals all of that good stuff uh and the lord saw that it was fitting and it was good Okay, but for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So, the Lord God caused the man to fall asleep into a deep sleep. 
And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made woman from the rib of the man he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woe man. See where we got that? We had a man, then woe. Put it together, you got woe man. All right. Born out of the rib of a man. That's why I don't understand why men want to beat on women, mistreat women in any fashion or fashion or form. Because uh, it was ordained, it was holy. You know, we're taking from man a creation of him being first. And, you know, how men treat women now. Not all men, but, you know, too many to count to say it's not a problem. Uh, got too much domestic violence going on. Um, and that's just not right. We're all out of line. We're all out of the word of God or how he wanted us to betray ourselves, to be like him and walk like him and have moral compasses where it dictates our behavior and our demeanor and our interaction with one another. So, ooh, definitely has gone amok for lack of a better word but um going back to the completion of the lord forming from a rib out of adam's body to form woman okay which this is what adam called he had the privilege of calling or giving um the female a name which he called woman all right born out of a man Okay, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. And that's more so of what a marriage or unity was about uh, when woman was made for a helpmaker for the man. All right, and just giving a little edification on Adam, the name of Adam, what he was in the genealogy of our legacy from the beginning. Um, Adam was the first man of the earth. I guess you can say the first father of uh, human creation. Uh, but Adam, in the Bible, it means man. Okay, birth data formed by God from the dust of the earth in the Garden of Eden. Okay, occupation, as we see um, Adam performing, is more so... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me, like an entrepreneurship type thing, really, in self employment. He was a farmer, a zoologist, caretaker of Eden, which was the garden, landscaper, I guess you can say. Zoologist was more so, he worked with the animals, uh, I guess, showed them different things that they can do to become better animals. Uh, Farmer, you know, he was working good with growing vegetation for food, not only just for human consumption, but for his uh, uh, animal consumption as well. So he was all of that in a servant of the Lord, okay? He was best known for being the first person created in God's image with Eve, along with Eve, receiving God's creation mandate of what they were supposed to leave alone in the Garden of Eden. If they were, they were going to have a fleshly death and go back to dust whenever the Lord saw fit to put us back to dust. And we were going to be uh, suffering a lot if we were to partake of the tree of life or a tree of knowledge of good and bad, uh, if you would. He was also being the father of the human race, known for that, and known for naming all the animals of the earth, along with Eve, and participating in humanity's fall into sin. Because again, you know, with um, the serpent, the evil one, Satan, sin uh, manifested itself into a form of a snake, talking snake, where he was one of the animals. Uh, that God had created as well, 
and he seduced Steve in a way of letting her know that, you know, anything the Lord was saying, you know, wasn't true. He was just trying to scare them because if they ate from the tree of um, knowledge uh, of good and evil, they would be more so like the Lord, uh, stomping big and bad like he was, and he would be. They would be on one of, one accord with him. That's fooling Eve, and Eve was just being dumb, um, not using her wits about her. I mean, she was in this luxury, not uh, wanting or caring for anything, no pain, no suffering, no disgust, no frustration, nothing. But, of course, you know, temptation was out there. You know, Satan was telling her everything. Uh, totally the opposite of what the Lord was telling them. And, you know, she she just wanted to be free to do what she wanted to do. But she already had the freedom to do what she wanted to do. But just being petty, okay? That's all it was, pettiness and stupidness. Okay, but we're going to move on from there. That was my, um, my dialogue there, what I felt about the passage and how it was reading and how it was going. Uh, we move on to the last... Passage of chapter 2, verse 29, talks about the man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. See, they thought that was their clothes, being naked. You know, where she was exposing her breasts, her vagina, you know, all her thighs and legs, you know, things that men like. And, of course, his penis was out there flowing for the world to see and you know, it was no shame in the game because this is just how it was, you know. Didn't need no no uh no uh justification for clothes. We didn't we were beyond that. We were living in you know, okie dokie land. Everything was given to us. We didn't have to work that hard. You know, the Lord was just like very pleased with us, okay? And there wasn't no pedophilia there, wasn't no you know, people want to molest folks and uh, take advantage of you know, the man or the woman. And none of that was happening. Everything was just fucking dory. You know what I'm saying? Almost like when you're born out of your mother's womb. You don't know nothing, you know nothing about good or bad. You have to be taught that or told that. And it just grows with you and manifests itself just like love and hate. You know, it has to be taught. Babies don't know that when they're birthed into the world, okay? So that was it for chapter 1 and 2 of Genesis, the beginning of everything. Um, and that's a good thing, you know, but it don't turn out so good for us because, you know, we just, whew, we were born when we had the first creation of man and woman, Uh we were, we were just born from dust in a rib of a man. You know, no pain. Everything was just like a sedative given to us. If it was supposed to cause pain for Adam, the Lord moving one of his ribs, he didn't feel nothing. He just fell asleep. The Lord put him on a little anesthesia sleep. And he woke up and he was fine. You know, still rid of the name animals and, you know, different mammals and, and just everything. You know, just everything. He was fine. But, you know, the Lord know what he had did make for Adam to be uh, governed over and stuff. He wasn't happy because he didn't have nobody just like him. So, when, you know, the Lord made Eve. Everything was hunky door for Eve got tricked. But that's going to come in chapter 3 and 4, I'm sure. The downfall of everything and being kicked out of you know, pure paradise in a sense. So we'll get to that uh, tomorrow, God willing. That will be um, September the 11th, um, Tuesday of September. Okay? Whenever I get home and get adjusted and I can come in and read my Bible with you all. But that's all I had. If you have any questions, comments, you know, put them down in the um, this section where it needs to be, and we'll talk about it then. Other than that, enjoy uh, reading with you, Bible Scripture, having our time together, and uh, acknowledging the Word of God and how we can do better, okay? But that's it, y'all. Have a blessed and wonderful night, evening, or afternoon, whenever y'all are viewing this video. God bless you and yours. 
um, take time out to read your Bible, your scripture, even if you don't do it with me, you know, make sure you take the time out to spend some alone time with the Lord, okay? Let them know what's on your mind or what's not on your mind. If you just want to give thanks and praise, that's a beautiful thing as well. All right, but y'all have a great, um, I'm going to say evening or wee hours in the morning, and I'm going to take myself to sleep, okay? Blessings to you all. Good night.